The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. And today we're going to explain how child custody works in Illinois when the parents are under the age of 18. So we use the term child custody uh, because it's easy, but right now courts are instead using the term parenting time and responsibility. And it's a, a sliding scale. Ra rather than having a custodial parent and a parent with visitation time, you might have uh, anything approaching 50-50 parenting time, or it can be uh, one parent has is the residential parent and the other parent is the non-residential parent, but parenting time and responsibility are the terms that we use now. So parenting time and responsibility for underage parents works basically the same way as it does for parents who are over the age of 18. Underage parents have a right to parenting time and responsibility in the same way parents of any age do. Uh, when determining parenting time and responsibility, courts will look at a number of factors, basically all of the facts of the situation, to determine what parenting time and responsibility scheme is in the best interest of the children. Uh, so in this case, when we've got underage parents, one thing to note is that the age and maturity level of the parents plays a much larger role when considering what is in the best interest of the child. So if you have a uh, parent under the age of 18, that doesn't disqualify them from having any parenting rights. It just means that their age, maturity level, and responsibility level are going to be taken into account by the court in determining what parenting rights uh, each of the underage parents is going to have. Another thing to note is that just like any other unmarried uh, parenting situation, the uh, father that's underage has to establish paternity before he can get any rights to parenting time or responsibility. So we have a different article and video at learn-about-law.com about how to establish paternity and how paternity law works. So check that out if you want to learn uh, about establishing paternity, but before any parenting rights are going to be given to the teenage father, he's going to have to establish that he is, in fact, the father and legally establish paternity. Um, a lot of the times, grandparents will be uh, will play a heavy role in parenting the grandchild if the parents are minors. Um, this can take the one of three forms. It can just be an increased level of support. You know, maybe the parent and the child live with the grandparents, and the grandparents are providing financial support. Uh, it might also be the grandparents being named guardians for the child, legal guardians for the child, or the grandparents even adopting the child. So we'll talk about the difference between grandparents being named a guardian of the child versus adopting the child. What's most common, uh, if the grandparents are not going to just go with an informal support system, uh, is to be named a guardian for the child, and you can do this by filing a petition for guardianship. And this is essentially a temporary situation where the parent has uh, the legal responsibility to care for and raise the child until the parent is mature enough to take over that responsibility and terminate the guardianship. So basically the idea is right now the parent of the child is uh, unfit to be uh, a parent because they're not old or mature enough. Um, but you anticipate that in the future they will take over that responsibility once they're ready to do so. And that's what a guardianship is for. So the, uh, once the petition is filed, a hearing will be held, and one of two things can happen. Either the parents of the, uh, the underage parents can voluntarily agree to the grandparents taking over as guardians of the child, in which case there's, it's a pretty simple matter. They just have to show that, still pr prove to the court that's, that the grandparents uh, being guardians will be in the best interest of the child. The other thing that might happen is if the underage parents object and the guardianship is being entered over their objection, the burden is on the grandparents who are seeking guardianship or anybody seeking guardianship of the child uh, to show that the parents are unfit to be parents. And this might it, age alone will not demonstrate this. You have to show uh, that they're not responsible enough, and age can be a factor. Um, the other alternative is adopting the child. Now, this is permanent. So if, you, if a grandparent adopts the child, they're permanently taking over parental responsibility and permanently terminating the parental rights of the underage parent. Uh, this may make sense in some families where the, uh, the underage parent and the grandparent agree that uh, the child is too young to, even in the future, have the burden of being a parent. Um, 
but it's definitely a, a rarer solution because it is a permanent situation. And similarly to a guardianship, uh, the grandparent who's seeking to adopt the child has to first terminate the rights of both uh, both parents, assuming that the father has established paternity. Um, and by doing, in order to do so, they have to prove that they are unfit to be parents. Um, so that's a, a more extreme uh, solution than simply being named a legal guardian, which is uh, a, a temporary band-aid on the situation. Adoption is the permanent transfer of parental rights to uh, to the grandparent. Uh, we have one other article and video that may be of interest to you. I mean, we probably have a lot of them, but one that particularly ties in with this. Uh, we have a article and video about how child support works for teenage parents. And in that situation, the grandparents may have some responsibility for child support. So you may want to check that out. Uh, Learn-about-law.com is where you can find our articles and videos. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section uh, at learn-about-law.com below the post or below the video on our YouTube station. If you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.